thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to give a talk to this conference. It, it's a great pleasure and great honor to me to give the talk. So I will talk about mainly on anomalous diffusive processes and uh, what is the difference with uh, normal diffusion uh, in systems uh, that uh, show this anomalous diffusi diffusive behavior. So I will give a short introduction, then I will give some different approaches to this anomalous diffusion, and then I will explain what does it mean tempered memory and uh, stochastic resetting, and then I will summarize my, my result. Uh, so we all know what is normal diffusion. Uh, the normal diffusion uh, in terms of the mean square displacement uh, uh, means that the mean square dis displacement has a linear dependence on time, but uh, in many systems, uh, this relation is not satisfied, but instead of, uh, instead of uh, linear dependence on time, uh, the mean square displacement has a power law dependence on time, and depending on the, this uh, exponent alpha, we can distinguish the case of sub subdiffusion, normal diffusion, or superdiffusion. And there are many systems uh, that shows uh, this anomalous diffusive behavior, such as uh, anomalous transport in biological cells, Subdiffusion in artificially crowded systems, uh, also in some lipid bilayer membranes, and also active transport in living cells. So the uh, origin of this anomalous diffusion uh, may be uh, some random potential that acts on the particle, or it can be uh, some geometric constraint that was presented in the previous uh, in the previous presentation that uh, the particle uh, cannot freely move. Uh, uh, in all directions, but uh, uh, its motion is, is uh, ge geometrically constrained, or it can be if the diffusion coefficient depends on the position of the particle or depends on the time uh, uh, of the system. So all these are uh, cases uh, where this anomalous diffusion uh, occurs. So the scholars working in this field uh, used to say that anomalous in, is normal, like non-Markovian uh, processes are all, uh, also are not exception, but uh, it, it's a rule. So anomalous diffusion, it's it's really normal uh, normal uh, process. Uh, so there are different approaches to anomalous diffusion, and I will talk about some of these uh, approaches. For example, continuous time random walk, and also uh, generalized Langevin equ equation and fractional Langevin equation. So. Uh, but also in many systems, uh, uh, there is a transition, for, for example, from anomalous diffusion in the short time limit, and then the system goes to normal diffusion in the long time limit, or maybe it goes to some stationary state uh, where the mean square displacement saturates. And uh, then we need some model to, to describe all these behaviors in the short time limit and in the long time limit. So we can uh, explain this uh, behavior by some simple model. So I, I will show some. Uh, of these models. Uh, this uh, was already uh, uh, very, very nicely elaborated in the previous talk, uh, but as uh, repetitio est mater studiorum, I will repeat once again. Uh, so we will consider the generalized Langevin equation uh, where uh, we have here this memory kernel, gamma, and uh, this is the equation which is different than the standard or classical Langevin equation, uh, which is valid, for example, if we immerse a massive particle in some liquid environment uh, where the mass of the particle is much bigger than the mass of the molecules of the, of the environment, uh, and uh, uh, then the, the interaction is uh, uh, appeared in very short time, and then we have this delta correlation. So if we put instead of gamma delta function, we have the, the classical Langevin equation. But if the uh, mass of the particles of the environment are compared with the mass of the particle immersed in this environment, then instead of delta function, we have some uh, uh, memory function, uh, gamma, and uh, in many cases, if this friction term is much higher than the inertial term, we can simply neglect this uh, inertial term and easily can solve this Langevin equation. Uh, so this was all already mentioned. If the, the correlation of the noise is uh, related to the 
uh, friction uh, to the memory friction, then we have that uh, we have this fluctuation dissipation theorem, which means that the, the fluctuation and this dissipation in the system uh, comes from the same source. But if this is not satisfied, then we say that this is some external noise uh, and we don't have this fluctuation dissipation theorem. And then by Laplace transform, we can solve this equation and we can easily find uh, for a general form of the memory kernel, the mean square displacement or the ve velocity correlation function. So if we put gamma of t that is equal delta function, we simply uh, can obtain that the mean square displacement has a linear dependence on time and we have exponential uh, decay of the velocity co uh, correlation function. Uh, but what happens if this uh, uh, noise, it's not a white noise, where we have a delta correlation, but uh, it's a fractional Gaussian noise. Uh, what does it mean, fractional Gaussian noise? It means that its correlation uh, is a, a, a power, has a power law dependence on time. And if we put in the Langevin equation, in the overdump Langevin equation, then we can uh, solve uh, the mean square displacement. We, we will see that uh, in the system is observed an uh, anomalous or subdiffusion, and this example was all already mentioned where uh, with this uh, equation, the conformational dynamics in proteins were, uh, was explained. Uh, so uh, the tyrosine is a donor of electron, Flavina denim, uh, denim uh, cleotide is an acceptor of electron, and while transferring this electron, the distance between these two parts uh, um, uh, oscillates and uh, if we measure the velocity correlation function, we will see that uh, it's, it has a power low decay uh, with, uh, with time. Uh, another approach to, to anomalous diffusion is the continuous time random walk, which is a bit uh, generalization of a simple, simple random walk, which was discussed from uh, 1905 by Pearson. Uh, and, uh, uh, what does it mean continuous time random walks? It means that the particle performs uh, random uh, jumps and after each uh, random jump, uh, uh, it stays at that position for a random time. So if this, uh, uh, if this waiting time between uh, two, two jumps of the particles is exponential and if the uh, jumps uh, of uh, the particles are from the uh, Gaussian distribution, then we, we can, from this continuous time random walk, we can derive the, the standard diffusion equation. Uh, but uh, uh, if we consider some general form of the uh, waiting time probability distribution function and jump length at the probability distribution function, then we can find the, the probability distribution function in Fourier Laplace space, and if we use the case for a Brownian motion and put in the, in the equation for the probability distribution function, we, we find that uh, this is the equation for standard Brownian motion. But if the, instead of exponential waiting time, we, we have some power law waiting time, which is given by uh, one minus S to power of alpha. If we put this uh, power law waiting time in the general form of the equation for the probability distribution function, then we will find that uh, uh, the probability distribution function uh, satisfies such uh, an equation uh, where we have some memory kernel there and we see if gamma is equal to, to delta function, we have standard diffusion, diffusion equation. But if we have some power law waiting time or other more general waiting time, then we have some more generalized uh, diffusion equation. And this continuous time random walk uh, can be easily solved. Uh, this equation can be easily solved by so-called subordination approach where uh, uh, the random uh, motion is parametrized uh, in terms of some operational time, which is uh, the number of steps of the particle. And if uh, this, uh, uh, the relation between the physical time t and operational time u is some uh, alpha stable Levy noise, then uh, we, we can find the solution of the, this generalized Langevin equation by knowing uh, the so-called subordination function. So here is simply Gaussian distribution for the Brownian motion and uh, uh, this is the subordination function. Uh, so this is the solution for the standard equation 
we know that the, this is Gaussian, but for the uh, power law waiting time, we have some Fox function from where we see that uh, this is a non-Gaussian probability distribution function. Uh, but this can be uh, repeated for some general form of waiting time and uh, by using of this subordination approach we can find that the mean square displacement of this uh, equation with memory kernel can be simply obtained by this simple relation and if we put delta function so this is one we have normal diffusion if this is power law we have some power law dependence on time uh, and uh, such anomalous diffusion can be observed uh, if we consider a diffusion in so-called comp structure, uh, which means that the particle uh, moves in x direction, but then can be stuck in the fingers of the comp, and when the particle return back to the backbone, it can continue to go in x direction, but the particle from here cannot jump here. So because of these geometric constraints in the system, then uh, we see that the mean square displacement along the backbone is one half because uh, the returning probability of Brownian particle to come back to the backbone is t to minus three half. And uh, if you consider the returning probabilities of waiting time for the mov movement of the particle along the backbone, then we put in the uh, equation for the continuous time random walk and we obtain that uh, the mean square displacement has a uh, power law dependence on time. And uh, one can derive the diffusion equation. So it's a simply two dimensional diffusion equation, but uh, the diffusion uh, along the x direction contains this delta function, which means that if y is different than zero, this term is, uh, is equal to zero. So the, uh, the movement along the backbone is uh, only at y equal to, to zero. Uh, this can be generalized, for example, for three-dimensional comp. So we have a backbone, fingers of the backbones, and then fingers of the fingers. And then because of this additional uh, X is then the, the mean square displacement along the backbone is one uh, f uh, t to power one fourth in Y is t to one half and in Z we have simple uh, Brownian motion. Uh, so the tempered memory, what does it mean tempered memory? This means that if we consider one showing an equation and in the memory kernel we, after some uh, characteristic crossover time, uh, we have exponential cutoff of the memory kernel. And if we put this uh, tempered memory kernel in the equation, we will find that the mean square displacement can be represented by this three parameter meter clefter function. But if we analyze the uh, asymptotic behaviors, we will see that the system from sub, sub diffusion in the long time limit goes to normal diffusion because we cut this uh, exponentially we have exponential cutoff of, of the memory. And that's why we have, in the long time limit, we have normal diffusion. We can calculate the velocity correlation function, and it was shown that such model can be used to describe uh, 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 the diffusion of uh, lipid bilayers membrane. And uh, these uh, lipid uh, uh, structures, if we immersed in uh, water and uh, room temperature, they, uh, they form these uh, bilayers and uh, uh, according to the simulation, it is shown that these uh, bilayers move uh, together, but not, they, do, they don't perform like jump processes. So uh, they satisfy this uh, equation. And if we try to, fi to fit the experimental results with the uh, theoretical results, we see that uh, we have a perfect uh, uh, agreement and we see that uh, uh, crossover uh, from sub subdiffusion to normal diffusion appears at uh, 10 nano nanoseconds, which is observed by the, by the simulations. Uh, and this uh, process of tempered memory can be generalized to, to different continuous time random work processes uh, where instead of this memory kernel gamma, which appears due to the waiting time in the system, if we have exponential cutoff in the waiting time, then we have this additional term in the, in the diffusion equation. And if we solve this equation, we will see that in the short time limits, the mean square displacement is like there is no tempering, but in the long time limit, we observe normal, normal diffusion because of the uh, exponential cutoff of the, of the memory kernel. Uh, and... Uh, this was shown that uh, can be applied uh, 
to describe the transient diffusion of telomeres in the nucleus of mammalian cells. So I will not go in details, but uh, in such systems, this crossover from anomalous diffusion to normal diffusion uh, has been observed. And uh, uh, because of this exponential cutoff of the, of the waiting time of the, of the particle. Uh, and at the end, I would like to, to talk about uh, stochastic resetting. How, how many minutes I have? Ten minutes. Okay, so uh, this is another process where we also have uh, some transition uh, in the system, uh, for example, from anomalous diffusion to some non-equilibrium steady state. Because of uh, if we introduce a stochastic reset of the particle uh, to the initial to the initial position, so uh, why this uh, stochastic resetting is important because there are. Uh, it has applications in uh, various uh, fields, uh, starting from for aging uh, dynamics or uh, animal search for, for food or maybe some computer algorithms and web searches, but also it uh, applies in economy and finance. For example, if we have some sudden uh, market crashes where uh, uh, this income dynamics is reset to some previous, previous state, but uh, there are also many works nowadays on quantum dynamics with, uh, with resetting, and uh, uh, this is still a very uh, top, uh, topic that uh, is worth to be considered in the, uh, in the future. Uh, and what is, uh, what is stochastic resetting? This means that after some, some uh, Sometimes the particle starting from some initial position is reset to this initial position. And between two resetting events, the particles perform free, uh, free diffusion. And this is the, the paper by Evans and Majumdach, which uh, is published 10 years ago. And this year or last year, there was a special issue about the 10 years of, of this uh, seminal paper by Evans and, and Majumdach. And uh, this process of stochastic resetting can be described by this renewal equation where, where we have the resetting part and we, uh, we have uh, the part, the term uh, where there is no resetting up to time t. And if we multiply this equation by x squared integrate, we will see that the mean square displacement also satisfies this renewal equation. And uh, if we want to, to solve this equation, we will see that in case of no resetting, we have uh, some uh, Gaussian distribution, but if you introduce resetting in the long time limit, we obtain some uh, no, non-equilibrium steady state, and uh, it has uh, like Laplace, Laplace shape of the, of the distribution, where this alpha zero is the inverse time scale. And uh, the mean square displacement from normal diffusion goes to, to some saturation, which depends on the resetting parameter. And this approach we can introduce, for example, in this uh, generalized Langevin equation, which uh, describes continuous time random walk with some uh, long tailed waiting time. And if we start from the renewal equation, and then we try to solve this renewal equation, we can arrive again to another generalized diffusion equation. But this memory kernel here uh, satisfies also renewal equation of the, of the uh, first, uh, uh, first uh, diffusion equation. And then if we want to, to solve this, uh, we obtain that uh, there appears stationary distribution uh, and it's again uh, Laplace distribution like for a simple Brownian motion with resetting. This means that anomalous diffusion with stochastic resetting in the long time limit approaches also this Laplacian uh, distribution. And uh, then we can easily calculate the mean square displacement. If, if we analyze the short and long time limit, we see that in the short time limit, it behaves like without resetting in the long time limit, it, it saturates. So we have this transition dynamics. This is the, for the standard diffusion equation, how from this gamma, if we uh, uh, use delta function, we arrive to this known equation for the stochastic resetting. And if we introduce a power law memory kernel in the equation, we again obtain some non-equilibrium stationary state. But uh, now uh, this inverse time depends on, on alpha. 
uh, and we can apply this uh, mechanism to comb structure where the particles is reset to initial position or it is reset to the backbone or it is reset to the, to the fingers and all these uh, terms are given here for, for different resetting mechanisms and if we do the numerical simulation and then uh, perform the calculations we will see that uh, uh, in the first case if the particles is reset to the initial uh, position all the marginal distributions in all three directions approaches uh, stationary uh, state and we have transition from anomalous diffusion to, to, to some uh, saturation. Uh, but in case of uh, resetting uh, to the backbone, this means that in the equation we have something like uh, exponential cutoff of the memory due to resetting. Because when the particle is stuck in the fingers, you reset to the backbone, then you, you cut off the memory. And because uh, this term uh, uh, is e to minus rt, then we have that this characteristic crossover times appears uh, at uh, 1 over, over r. So we, we see that in this case along the backbone there is no non-equilibrium non stationary state because we have observed the diffusion, but in, all the, in the other directions we have, we have this transition to the non-equilibrium stationary state. But if we reset the particle from the uh, additional fingers to the main fingers, that the situation is a bit more complicated. And again, we can find the solution of the problem by this uh, generalized diffusion equation, but here the memory kernel can be a co convolution of uh, memory and, and uh, resetting. And because of this, we have transition from one anomalous diffusive behavior to another or transition from anomalous diffusion to normal diffusion and uh, along that direction we have a simple Brownian uh, motion with, with resetting which means that we have transition to the stationary state. So uh, with this presentation I, I try to, to give two examples of uh, processes where uh, we have exponential truncation of the memory or we have resetting of the, of the memory. In one case we have transition from anomal, anomalous diffusion to normal diffusion. In another case from anomalous diffusion we have stationary state. So uh, there are many works also related with heterogeneous diffusion with stochastic resetting or geometric Brownian motion with stochastic resetting where this approach can be, can be applied. And these are some works uh, by our group and I would like to thank to all my collaborators. We will have three posters there and also we just started to do some uh, resetting in quantum systems. On Friday, uh, Vladimir will give a talk about uh, this problem that we are working on and at the end I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation and these funding agencies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Chair.